Hey everyone, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael D. Bradley. Are we, uh... Are we live? Okay, we are doing this. Hey everyone, welcome back to the final installment of Realms Remembered. That's right, we have gotten to the end of things. And I know, I know, some of you maybe missed an episode here and there. Or like, what about Timeless? And possibly if any sequels for that come out, and maybe something else. Well, if it does, that's a whole other issue. I am done with Salvatore, and I hope that some other authors uh, pick up the reins and start doing some other stuff as well. But I am not going to worry about that. That's not going to be covered. Under the aegis of what we're doing here, we're just going to go ahead and uh, call this the end. So let's talk about some things. Let's talk about... The fact that you can see me, I guess I should mention that. Uh, this is crazy, uh, a bit of a uh, an experiment, and I'm not editing out my ums and uhs as I usually do. If you notice a cut, then something really big happened, and I decided to cut it out. But for the most part, I figured, you know, anybody who's watching this has probably been here for quite a while and is one of the fold, and um, I don't know, I guess it just seemed to make sense to talk more directly, you know? I feel like this is kind of more of a, uh, a personal episode, if you will, even though I'm not going to, like, go into hysterics or anything. I'm just going to talk about the books. But, yeah, that's uh, that's what I felt like. This would make the most sense to just be a more personal uh, interaction between you and I, anybody who has uh, stuck around for this whole thing. Maybe you found this after it was over. That's awesome, and I uh, thank you for joining me on this journey in some way, shape, or form. So, let's talk about... So I just shut down the video because it was really distracting to see myself talking back to myself on a delay. So I don't know if this is showing up well or not, but let's talk about first Ed Greenwood's Death Masks, set in 1491. So after liking Spellstorm, I was excited to go into this, but sadly, it's, um... I would say the the thing that I like least about it is that it's basically Spellstorm, except at a much larger level. Uh, it is uh, kind of Spellstorm, except happening in all of Waterdeep. In Waterdeep, the masked lords are being murdered. So, um, um, it's a murder mystery, but with a whole city. And I was like, oh, maybe this is going somewhere interesting, even though I don't really care about any of the characters. Um, and, uh... It just, it's like, I was one of the lords who's left over at the end of everything, and he was wanting more power or whatever, I guess? I don't know, it really had all the typical Greenwood stuff that I dislike, and nothing that really kept me interested. Not even Mert flirting shamelessly with everything on two legs could, uh, could hold my interest, sadly. Um, I would be curious to know, does Waterdeep... Like, I, I mean, I, I guess there isn't... I, I guess there are now a couple of things um, published that take place in Waterdeep in 5th edition. Are, are they in massive upheaval because of all the lords being murdered? I don't know. Maybe, hell, for all I know, maybe the adventures published center around that. Okay, so I don't know if this video recorder <laughs> stops at a certain time or if it just shut down because I had minimized it. But in any case, I guess there will be edits in here. So, huzzah. Uh, so what I was saying is, um, in 5th edition, I've played some in Out of the Abyss, and I've also been a player in another one that involved, like, Storm Giants, Ice Giants, something like that. Um, and I'm running Ravenloft, but I haven't done any of the things that are set in Waterdeep. So maybe... Uh, yeah, maybe they tackle this, maybe something's going on with that, and, uh, uh, the fallout actually means something. In which case, cool. I, I, I would be curious to see where it goes. Seems like it's kind of close to what they did with Neverwinter in 4th edition, but it could still work, I'm sure. Then, our final book that we're going to talk about is Samantha Henderson's Dawnbringer, which is, weirdly enough, set super far in the future. And I have a theory about that, but let's see. It starts out in uh, 1460. That's where part one takes place, essentially. Then it skips ahead to, I want to say it's 1585. Yeah, 1585, where the majority of the book takes place. And then the third act is in 1600. 
So my theory as to why it does this giant skip into the future, because it's not like any sort of secrets of the realms are given away, right? I mean, it's not like, oh, the year 1600 and now nether rolls come back and everything's under the shadow influence and magic is different and yada 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 it's just it's 1600 in this tiny part of the land that's the only thing that we get to see this place called jatter and hold uh which is like a a rock that's a, a trading company and a family are there but i think the reason that samantha chose to do it this way is because the book centers around divas and while reading this book i was like is it is it meant to be Devas? Because, like, Veda, like, it seems very Eastern-influenced, like an Indian-influenced uh, word, and, like, Veda is V-E-D-A, and this is D-E-V-A, and you pronounce Veda, Veda. So it was like, is it supposed to be Devas? But the whole, like, the past nine years or whatever that they've been in the world, I've pronounced it Devas, so they're Devas. That's, that's what we're going with there, Devas. So it centers around a couple of Devas, uh, the, the part one really doesn't center around them. They just make a cameo appearance. But then, as of part two, and they really don't take center stage until part three, but but they're kind of what the story is built around, right? And I think the intent was, if you're looking at Divas, you want it to take place over a long period of time to really deal with the fact that they are, they can be so old, right? Uh, like elves, they can live for a really, really, really long time and be reincarnated, though we don't really see that happen in this book. And I think the idea was that, uh, I guess, divas weren't actually in the world until Aber Toril came back together in 4th edition. So... The idea was, well, it has to start at 4th edition, but I'd like it to go 100 or more years, so we got to move it all the way to 1600, and we'll set it in a small place where whatever changes take place in the rest of the world is not going to matter. Of course, the problem with this <laughs> is that, I believe with the Sundering, Aber went away. Are, are there Davis left? Divas? Are there de now I can't decide which way to say it. Screw it. It's Davis now. That's We've decided that. I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know if the Divas are still in the realms at this point. Um, I don't know if it's been dealt with. I don't think they're... I mean, they're definitely not in the Player's Handbook. They might be in one of the other things uh, since then. But, you know, the realms has just been so kind of like the default setting, but we don't go into a lot of details about things. It's just kind of inferred from previous editions. But it would seem to me if you're going to say, well, they only came there during 4th edition, then they probably left during 5th edition. So either way, it didn't work. I think it would make more sense just to start this in the mid-14th century and have the uh, climax take place in the mid-15th or late 15th century, uh, and say that divas have just always been around, much like sorcerers had always been around pre-third edition, just that they weren't as numerous, and uh, maybe people didn't understand how magic worked or whatever. But whatever, uh, this is the way that they decided to go with things, so we're running with it. None of that detracts from the story. None of that has really anything to do with the plot. I, I just, it's, it's weird, right? That everything at this time was set mid to late 15th century. And this is like, nope, gonna go all the way to 1600 for no apparent reason. At first, I thought, uh, really more from reading the back of the book, I thought that this was gonna be a riff on Romeo and Juliet. And I thought, hey, that's really cool. We'll have gone full circle because back in, Episode 2 of Realms Remembered, if you might remember, three mics ago. That's another thing. This is uh, this is one mic ago for me, and it's not set up amazingly. I just kind of did this last minute and had something that would work, so uh, I hope this sounds decent. But uh, uh, I that totally lost my train of thought. No, um, yeah, so back three mics ago... I uh, uh, I was talking about how, you know, I, I don't want Shakespeare in what I read. I don't really like Shakespeare, yada, yada, yada. And so I was like, hey, a chance to talk about Romeo and Juliet. And that's really not... <laughs> like, it's there for about 
10 pages, maybe. Uh, the middle section is about two characters from warring houses having an arranged marriage so that the houses can come together. And you can tell, obviously, even from the arranged marriage part, that's not what happens in Romeo and Juliet. But, um, but the fact that they like each other at all uh, is kind of Romeo and Juliet. And there are forces in the families who don't want them to have a happy ending and, uh, in fact, give them a very tragic ending. And so I, I guess that's kind of similar, but it really just doesn't bear a ton of um, similarities beyond uh, just that very, very basic thing. And like I say, that's that's over pretty quickly. Um, I don't have a ton to say about this book other than I, I, I thought it was okay. Um, kind of a weird note to end on. Really long, unnecessary epilogue. And, um, there are a few passages that are really great descriptions of what it's like to be a diva, I thought. Uh, so, I like that. There was, uh, something about, like, it, it's, it's like being, um, water held in a hand and then cupped and poured out into other hands over and over so that parts were lost by, and something new was created and yada, yada, yada. And I, I don't know, I... I liked that. I thought it worked really well. And uh, again, I enjoyed the book, but it was difficult to uh, give a damn about anybody when each section switches so abruptly and and so so much. You know, it's not it's not so much an abrupt end. It just switches. Um, you know, the smallest switch is 15 years, and that's really the biggest switch, because it's kind of like, okay, everybody who was a big player in Part 2 is now just pushed aside, and we're just going to focus on the Divas and their interaction. And uh, so, so like I say, it was, it was difficult to really give a damn about anybody, but it wasn't a bad book. It's well written. You can tell that her background is more horror, because some of the horrific... Uh, sections in the story pop far more than anything else, uh, but again, if I gave a damn more about the characters, then that would probably work better. Um, yeah, I really... Also, the title just seems so random, out of the blue. It reminded me of... Uh, Oh, well, there's a, there's a Brandon Sanderson book. It's a, it's a self-contained book, light, like, now I want to call it Dawnbringer, Warbringer, I think it is. I think it's Warbringer, and it's really, it's almost exactly the same. Like, in the last 20 pages or so, one of our main characters is told, from here on out, you are called Warbringer, and he's like, okay. <laughs> and then the epilogue there is kind of him wandering away and being like, Warbringer, huh? the hell is that all about? And it's like, that's very much what this felt like, which I'll tell you, that's the only Brandon Sanderson book that I've read and uh, enjoyed. I, I don't know if you can count the Wheel of Time stuff. I read two out of those three and enjoyed them. But um, but of his own stuff, I really liked Warbringer. And then oh, I tried, what's it called? The Way of Kings or whatever? Oh, oh, I, cannot, I cannot make it through it. I just found the magic so silly. Whatever, some things work, some things don't. Speaking of which, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm really glad for everybody who's tried to engage me in a dialogue along the way. If somebody just comes on and says, I heart Salvatore, or, you know, more likely I heart Drizzt, or do you even like the realms, I, I generally don't respond. But anybody who asks me a legitimate question, I try to answer. And, um... And I hope that's shown that I that I do enjoy talking about the realms. Obviously, I like the Forgotten Realms. I mean, come on! Like I, I looked it up, and there's somewhere around 340 or so books, depending on whether you count the anthologies or not. And I think I fully read uh, over 170 of them. So uh, I I know it's 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 like half or whatever, but still, that's half of a really large amount. And the rest, I I I really feel like I gave a shot to most of them. And, uh, and you know, there are plenty of other resources out there uh, if you want more detailed descriptions or what have you. Um, uh, hell, Amazon, Goodreads, the all timelines uh, link that I include, things like that. 
uh, Candlekeep Forum, um, Forgotten Realms Archive on Facebook. I'm a member there. Uh, and, uh, and of course, you know, uh, not really dealing so much with the novels, but, um, there's, uh, Faroon History, also known as Forgotten Realms History, the YouTube channel where I provide, uh, one of the voices for. So, hey, uh, we are, oh, and, 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 uh, Jordan, uh, the f is silent. Uh, he also does some great stuff. Uh, again, not really so much novel centric that I've seen, but, uh, he has some good stuff that uh that delves more into the details uh, and things like that if that's what you're looking for and that's fine um i uh, especially if you've made it all this way and that's what you were interested in i'm sorry um this was always meant to be more literary criticism and uh just kind of a book review site you know um this summer i wed don Blinger. and that's where we are. So, hey, we made it. Uh, uh, it's been a fun ride. I don't know if I'm going to do anything from here on out. Honestly, I wouldn't mind doing something, and I kind of sort of started something a few months ago and made notes for it and so on and so forth, but, man, I don't know. It is a solitary, lonely journey. Uh, I have just been posting thoughts on Goodreads when I finish books, and especially if I like them, I try to at least make something slightly entertaining, and if you aren't already a friend on Goodreads, then feel free to become one. Uh, GordonCole at gmail.com is the way to find me. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, the other thing, too, is I think it would be fun to get an opposing viewpoint, to have discussions back and forth, and if anybody has any ideas and they think they would want to uh, to do that, then feel free to contact me, and we can talk about the possibility of doing something like that. Hell, even if it was something that I didn't like, like, for instance, Dragonlance, which, you know, it seemed like the obvious sort of next step, right, uh, after this, so I tried starting chronologically with them using all timelines and looking up stuff and seeing, you know, hey, uh, what what do I think about this? Because, of course, you know, in high school, uh, I read The Crystal Shard and I also read the, whichever comes first, Legends or Chronicles. You know, I read that trilogy and decently enjoyed it. And I think after skipping about eight books in a row, I was like, I just don't think Dragonlance is for me, man. Um... Though, if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. Kiefer Sutherland is Raceland. Pretty awesome. Yeah, so, uh, so I think that's, I think that's it, um, for everything. I think it is time to turn out the lights and pull down the shades and, uh, kick back. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Um, you know, I guess, sounds silly, but thanks to Ed Greenwood for creating the realms. I might not have liked most of your books, but I like the setting. And, um, yeah, thanks to, uh, thanks to, I don't know, I'm not gonna keep thanking people, I sound like an Os Oscar speech, but I cannot believe we actually made it to the end, oh my god. So hey, everybody, uh, have a good evening, and, uh, until next time, this is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered. It's still on.